Now the other way that we have of looking at data is how much they vary from one another. Um, central tendency is the one we typically use the most. Average obviously being the one that we use the most. If you follow baseball, a batting average of 30 just simply means that that, that, that batter is going to hit the ball 30% of the time, 3 out of 10 times on average, which to some degree can be a predictor of um, future behavior is what their averages are. But uh, as, as, as often happens, uh, whether in basketball or football with a quarterback in terms of his passing percentage or in baseball, is that people can get on streaks. And is it outside the average? Yeah. But for how long and, and how much will move the needle in terms of the central tendency. When we talk about variation, we're actually looking at how often or how much of a difference uh, scores are across the the the, the um, across the range of what goes on. So one of one of the the things which I've already mentioned, one of the items that we can look at to look at the data point variations is range, and so. You can give somebody a um, well. Let's give take an a, a example close to home. Most of you will have taken by this time the initial test, um, and it's and it's a version of the final, and it's one way that I can go about seeing how much you know coming into the class. Um, ranges can be anywhere from zero to a hundred. Um, now the averages may be, you know, let's just say fifty to be a say for example but in actuality scores may range anywhere from 12 up to 96 which gives us somewhat of an understanding of where people fall in terms of their uh, understanding of psychology that is what we refer to as range it is directly impacted by the lowest and highest scores and that's really all it is now the second thing is something we refer to as standard deviation. And standard deviation essentially looks at the, these uh, deviation of scores and turns it into something that allows us to be able to predict the, the uh, amount of deviation between a large number of scores. And they often, uh, oftentimes, scores fall into what, what, what uh, you're probably familiar with is the bell curve. And uh, these standard deviations uh, line out as a result of looking at the scores. This is where the mean is here. And then how much do scores deviate from the mean is what we refer to as a standard deviation. Typically on a normal curve, this is in the category of um, 34%. On this side, 34%, and 34% on this side. So generally, within one standard deviation of uh, the mean itself, one standard deviation, we have 68% of the people accounted for, um, almost two-thirds of the population. The farther out we go, the more significant the deviation is, and now we're out at two devi standard deviations, and then we go out to the third, which is even more rare because, as you can tell, there are fewer people that fall out here. And the um, uh, the normal curve gives us a, a way of understanding where people are relative to other people. Uh, and the, the standard deviation is one way for us to actually do that. It, it makes it in standard scores. In other words, it's not raw scores um, really aren't, um, they're all over the map. They, they really can be any way that, that uh, the individual has scored. One way for us to begin to actually compare scores is put them in an interval that is the same amongst them all. And that's essentially what standard deviation allows us to do. Um, so range and standard deviation. Uh, in a lot of the journal articles you're going to be looking at, they will uh, talk about each. They will talk about the range of the scores, and they will talk about um, where the majority of the scores actually fall 
and how far they are from the mean and that's where standard deviation comes in. So one of the questions that actually comes um, as a result of all these uh, statistics, descriptive, you know, a, a summary which is simply a sum of all the scores uh, to a mean, to a median, to a mode, using standard deviations, uh, using a range. How do we know which of these are significant enough to um, apply to the general population? And there are three key things that are a key to understand uh, how we make things uh, reliable when we look at them. And th one of the first ones is um, essentially uh, the idea where uh, the sample is representative um, and a representative sample allows us to make some conclusions about uh, the population at large rather than a biased sample. If I were to put out, um, and this will happen with research methods, is that our students, uh, seniors that are going through research methods will put out a, a, a request for students to participate in their research. Is that representative? Well, probably not. It's a biased sample because it's the people who just simply um, uh, volunteer rather than being chosen. So uh, uh, how much can we actually apply the data to the larger s sample of students is very doubtful simply because we haven't chosen them to be more of a representative sample. The second thing um, is the variation of the of the observation and the the uh, um, variation uh, of observations and th that this idea of variation of observations um, if we begin to see a pattern in other words they become less variable then the the conclusions we make become that much more solid so the pattern betrays a less reliable in other words they don't v less variable and they don't um, uh, vary a lot then we can make some more solid conclusions the last one is uh, the uh, more cases the better in other words the the higher the number higher number of uh, um, uh, subjects the more reliable my s my uh, findings will be. Why? Because I will have more data points to actually work with. And when I do that, then I can make some better conclusions accordingly. Um, so when is something actually significantly different? And generally, what we do is that we look at, uh, again, we look at the um, uh, population at hand and something that we refer to it is as statistical significance um, is the number of students that we have that are blonde statistically significant um, in terms of being more uh, uh, is is the difference between brunettes and blondes statistically significant well generally what we do is we look at that and we say if it occurs less than 5% of the time, then we can be reasonably uh, assured that it is a statistical significance. If it occurs um, less than 5% uh, of the time uh, is kind of one of the thresholds. The other one is less than 1% of the time. And in each of these cases, we say that it is statistically significant. And significant in the difference that is uh, captured and that's what most research is attempting to do is how different is it um, if it is not statistically significantly different then we really can't make the conclusion that it will be reliably different and that is one of the key points when we talk about uh, some of the research we look at is the uh, idea of statist statistically significant differences.